So first, let's just take a moment to appreciate the Milky Way. This is a, a real view from the surface of the Earth, taken with a relatively long exposure. But nonetheless, this is the kind of thing you can see when you look up in the night sky in a very dark location. Um, so it's absolutely amazing, a beautiful sight. Uh, you know, I haven't seen a view like this very often. The last time I remember was up in uh, Mackinac Island in Michigan. So if you go somewhere sufficiently dark, very far from uh, any kind of city, you can see this amazing thing. So that's one reason to appreciate it. But what I think we should really be appreciating is how would we know that we're in a galaxy, right? So if you see this streak of stuff, the streak of light across the sky, how do you, how do you get from there that we, we're located in a galaxy? So the first thing that you need is you need to make maps of the Milky Way. And a real key is looking at the, the night sky uh, using the full electromagnetic spectrum. So what's shown here is the galactic plane. So this is um, the, just looking, the, the galaxy is basically a disk. You're looking along the edge of the disk here. This is just the view from Earth. And you're looking at this from different wavelengths and you can see it looks sort of very different, right? The center is kind of brighter in the radio, brighter in the infrared. Um, but in many other wavelengths, it's just kind of distributed sort of evenly, right? And so each of these different wavelengths tells you about different sources, different um, uh, compositional information. And so you piece them all together, and that's one way to learn something about the Milky Way structure. Another very important uh, thing that you need to do is look at other galaxies. So we can look at just you know many galaxies that we can see and try to find similarities to the Milky Way. And that's another key to trying to understand uh, what type of galaxy we're in and what the Milky Way looks like. So you know you can't get an image of the Milky Way, right? It's you can't fly outside of it and take a picture. Space is just simply too big. So this is as close as you're going to get to seeing what it looks like, right? So the the Milky Way, this is the general sort of structure. It has this uh, bar-shaped thing. Um, in the center of that bar-shaped thing, it's called the bulge. So there's like a sort of like a peanut shape, essentially, for our galaxy. These spiral arms uh, come out from there, and that's where most of the uh, stars are located, and there's also lots of gas kind of peppered uh, throughout here. So the Milky Way itself is about 100,000 light years long, if you're talking about the diameter of the disk. The uh, disk itself is somewhere around a couple thousand light years thick. It's separated into two components. There's a thin disk that's uh, several hundred light years thick, and a thick disk that's a couple thousand. Uh, light years thick. Um, so this is where most of the stuff is concentrated, most of the visible matter. Now there's also a halo uh, where we do have some visible matter, some stars and things called globular clusters orbiting, and the dark matter of the galaxy is also distribu distributed in this kind of sphere. So that's just the general overall structure, and if you're curious, the Sun is located somewhere here so, you know, 26,000 light years or so out from the center. Uh, the type of galaxy that we have is called a barred spiral galaxy. There, there will be a separate um, set of lectures on just galaxies in general. So just so you know, the Milky Way is a barred spiral, and that's because it has a bar at the center, and there are spiral arms. So nothing too special there. You might be wondering with the disk, how do you just distinguish between a thin and a thick disk. That seems kind of kind of goofy, isn't it? Just one disk. And, and not really the, the thick disk. This contains older stars, uh, and there are fewer metals. So what I mean by that is elements beyond hydrogen and helium. The thin disk, these are newer stars, and they have a higher so-called metallicity. So many more ele elements um, beyond hydrogen and helium. And we'll talk about this in, in the future um, in stellar evolution, what we mean by, you know, a newer star, older star, lots of better, few, lots of metals, fewer metals. The, the point is that the uh, population of stars is pretty different between this, this thin and this thick disk.
disk. Now, if you really want to, a, a better picture than that, other than a cartoon, you know, maybe this is as good of a view as you'll get of the Milky Way. So, of course, we cannot fly outside of the Milky Way and take a picture, right? It's even just to get outside of the thick disk takes a couple thousand years traveling at the speed of light. And if you wanted to get this far away, it would take, you know, millions of years. So not going to happen. Instead, we can look at something like this. So this is uh, UGC 12158. This is thought to be very similar to our Milky Way. So the Milky Way viewed from the top probably looks something pretty close to this. So what are some general you know, statistics on our Milky Way? So it's around 100,000 light years in diameter. Uh, the mass is something like 10 to the 12 solar masses. So that's what this symbol means. This circle is a zodiac symbol for the sun. So when you have that as a subscript, that means a solar mass. So around a trillion solar masses, uh, around half a percent of that is in gas, just kind of floating around as a cloud. Around 5% is concentrated within stars. There's something like 10 to the 11 stars in the Milky Way galaxy, so 100 billion. And then the rest, which is pretty much all of it, <laughs> is dark matter. So most of the, the galaxy is actually made of dark matter. The age of the Milky Way is roughly as old as the universe, as old as the universe and so we can date the age of stars using uh, radioactivity, and we can find that the Milky Way stars formed somewhere not too long after the Big Bang, um, basically, you know, once atoms could form. And so the Milky Way is extremely old. And in case you were curious, you know, what's the sun doing in the Milky Way? So the sun is, of course, uh, orbiting uh, in, a, in a circle around the center. It's around 26,000 light years out. And what's interesting is due to gravitational effects, the sun actually bobs up and down as it completes a circle around the uh, galactic center. And in terms of the actual orientation, so if the galaxy is rotating in the plane here, um, so the axis of rotation is vertical, then we're kind of spiraling through like a football almost. So the Earth is orbiting the sun this way, the sun is moving around the galaxy, the galactic center in, in that direction. Uh, none of these dimensions here are to scale at all. This is just giving you the, the relative geometry. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the components of our Milky Way galaxy. So the center is uh, this dense concentration of stars known as the bulge. And it's pretty hard to see in many different wavelengths in the optical. You might notice it's like a little brighter here, but it'd be hard to make out any kind of structure. There's a lot of just dust and gas that makes that center opaque. Where you really get the best image is from the infrared. So in the infrared, you can really start to make out a shape here. And that's where you see that it turns out that it's kind of a bar shape. So it's an elongated object. And it has sort of a, a peanut-like uh, shape is the closest thing analogous to it. So if we look deep in the, the center of the galaxy here, we can track the motions of stars. And this is roughly where the galactic center is. Uh, it's a region called Sagittarius A, and you can track the motion of stars and see them um, orbiting around in these ellipsoids and moving extremely fast. So each of the rings here is a different uh, object, and then the little circles on the object, this is an actual observation. So some of these are moving extremely rapidly, such that we have lots and lots of observations. Others are moving a little bit slower and uh, basically just using uh, classical mechanics to infer what the orbit of that object is. But nonetheless, all of these are orbiting around some very massive object that uh, has been determined, you know, must be a, a supermassive black hole, uh, which is a common feature at the center of galaxies. And a supermassive black hole may, may sound really awesome, like uh, more hardcore than a regular black hole, like one like the mass of a star. It turns out that these are actually not the ones that are going to be causing spaghettification. So you might have heard of this, this thing called spaghettification, where you get near a black hole 
and gravity is so much stronger at your feet than at your head that you get ripped apart, kind of extruded like a piece of spaghetti. Um, that actually wouldn't happen at a supermassive black hole, at least not out at the edge of it uh, where light can no longer escape. Um, it turns out there the force of gravity is not actually that impressive and it, it wouldn't rip you apart. But it is massive enough um, that basically it can be the gravitational center for the entire galaxy. So that's, that's kind of amazing. And the, the mass of our supermassive black hole, if I remember correctly, is we believe is somewhere around a million solar masses, so pretty big. Then the, the other major feature of the, the Milky Way, besides this, this central uh, bar bulge here, are the spiral arms. This is one view of what the spiral structure of the Milky Way um, looks like. You, you might find other maps. To, to be honest, this is a little bit up to debate. Uh, the, the reason is that we're looking edge on. We don't get this top view in this nice picture. Um, and so it's, it's difficult, right? You have to look through a lot of dust. What, what it seems to be the case is that there are two main spiral arm features. So there's this one big arm here spiraling out and then the second one here. And that's where most of the stars um, and the gas are concentrated and these two spiral arms we believe and then the Sun is just located here um, just kind of off of some minor thing uh, called a called a spur and that's where we're located at and then the final feature to talk about in our galaxy is the halo so there's not a whole lot of visible matter in the halo we do have a lot of uh, stars and groupings of stars orbiting. Um, so if this plane here, this um, rotated, you know, tilted square is the galactic plane, then, you know, the, the disk, the stars would be orbiting in a kind of a spiral within this plane. The halo, you just have objects orbiting in all kinds of different directions. So they're elliptical and they can be in many different uh, orientations. Uh, oftentimes the stars aren't just isolated, they're in grouping, so you have lots of stars together, you know, hundreds, thousands together, and these are known as globular clusters. Um, one really neat thing about the globular clusters is that those stars essentially all formed at the same time, and so we can learn about stellar populations and stellar evolution uh, just from looking at these globular clusters. They, they're really rich sources of information. And we know from looking at the orbital speeds of stars that uh, it's clear that our, our halo and really the whole galaxy is mostly in terms of mass this spherical blob of dark matter so you can make these things called galaxy rotation curves you're looking at the velocity as a function of the distance from the center of a galaxy so here in the background is an image of a galaxy known as messier 33 and we can plot the uh, velocity of the stars as a function of the distance from the center of Messier 33. And you see that the velocity is actually just kind of increasing following this curve. If you just had the visible concentration of matter, you would expect a velocity curve to look something like this. So it sort of falls off as uh, one over the square root of the radius out here. If you wanted to figure out how to calculate roughly this dependence, you could actually just take physics 2001, so algebra-based intro physics. It's not, it's not terribly complicated to, to arrive at this. You're essentially uh, equating the centripetal force to the gravitational force, and you can solve for that velocity. But if you don't want to do that, just take my word for it that the velocity curve should look something like this if there's only visible matter, but instead it looks something like this. Um, and this is true for all the galaxies we see. And so that's how we know that there's this big uh, spherical blob of dark matter. Um, in the next lecture, we'll talk about how the Milky Way actually came to, to form this way. But for now, we're done taking a tour of the structure. And so that is it for this uh, introduction to the Milky Way structure for Astronomy 1000.